All right, let's look at the long run behavior of a polynomial. So remember when we talked about dominance, we said that the higher powers of x dominate any lower power of powers of x in the long run. Now that concept comes into play here because when we have a polynomial, then the um, highest, the term with the highest power of x dominates all of the other lower powers of x, all those other terms with lower powers of x. And so we can just look at the leading term in order to determine the long run behavior of a polynomial, right? So if we have a polynomial, then um, the long run behavior is determined by the leading term, all right? All we need to do is figure out what's the leading term and look at the long run behavior of that term and that will tell us what the long run behavior is of the entire polynomial. All right, so let's take a look at this example now. We have some polynomials and we wanna match them to the graph. Now have, these graphs don't have any scale, they just have a shape, all right? So, so, but we, and so we're just going to look at the long run behavior of these polynomials in order to determine which uh, shape, which graph goes with which polynomial. All right, so the first thing we need to do then is identify the leading coefficient, I say. I keep saying leading coefficient, leading term, the leading term. What's the term with the highest power of x? Well, so f of x, right, this one has a leading term of 3x squared. That's the highest power of x, right? That's the term with the highest power of x. So that's our leading term. Over here, we have a minus 2x to the fifth, okay? Yeah, you need to include the minus. The minus is part of it because just remember subtraction is the same as adding the negative. So I can treat this as plus a negative 2x to the fifth. So our leading term is two, negative 2x to the fifth. Over here with h of x, all right, um, the leading term is all the way over here at the end. That's the highest power of x. And so those are the terms we need to look at to determine the long run behavior. And that's going to help us figure out what uh, which graph matches. And so if, when we look at long run behavior, we're looking at the limit as x approaches infinity and make that look, look a little more <laughs> like infinity and the limit as x approaches minus infinity, okay, of the function. So I'm looking at the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x, right? Now what happens to x squared as it gets bigger and bigger and bigger? It's just gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger, but it's always positive. So when, when x is positive, it's positive, it grows to infinity, all right? When x is negative and we square it, we're gonna get a positive number. And so this one also goes to infinity. So both, in, you know, both as x goes to positive or negative infinity, they both, both um, ends of the function grow to positive infinity. So the only one doing that right here is, uh, is this one. So this one is f of x, this middle graph. All right, so now let's look at g of x. So again, we're gonna look at the limit as x approaches infinity, positive infinity. We're gonna look at g of x, and we're gonna look at the limit as x approaches negative infinity, right, the limit of g of x. All right, so now we have a negative 2x to the fifth. That negative is part of it, so don't leave it out. Um, and so as x goes to positive infinity, x to the fifth is positive, but then we're multiplying it by negative 2. So it turns out to be negative, and it's going to just grow, grow and grow, but in the negative direction, so it goes to negative infinity. If we look at um, x going to negative infinity. So now we've got negative values of x. We're, we're taking them to the fifth power. So they're still negative, right? So it's an odd power of a negative is still negative. And then we're taking it times a negative too. So we're taking a negative times a negative. So we get a positive. And so this grows to positive infinity. All right, so we had to figure out which one of these graphs does that. All right, now this one, if I look at this one, this one is growing 
to positive infinity as x gets larger and larger in the positive direction. And it's going to negative infinity. That's just the opposite of what we want. So over here, um, when x goes to positive infinity, it goes to negative infinity, right? It's, growing, it's getting more and more negative. And then as we go in the negative direction towards infinity, this one's growing in the positive direction. So this one is our g of x. All right, so finally we have um, this last function. The leading coefficient is x cubed. Again, always look, sorry, I just, I said leading coefficient again, leading term. The leading term is x cubed. The leading term is x cubed. So what we need to do is look at the limit um, uh, as x goes to infinity of that leading term in order to determine the long run behavior of the whole function. All right, so as x goes to positive infinity, um, x cubed goes to positive infinity, and so this whole function goes to positive infinity. And as we go to negative infinity, negative infinity, then, um, and so we're taking negative numbers and we're cubing them, and they're still negative, and they're getting larger and larger and larger. So it goes to negative infinity. Now, for by process of elimination, you probably already guessed that h of x is this one. All right, but it's good to reason through it and make sure I didn't throw you a curveball. So, all right, well, um, that's all I have for this example, and I will meet you in the next video.